Mr. Driver, why did you stop so suddenly? Yeah, what's up? There's a man's body laying on the road up ahead. Oh, my land. He doesn't have a stitch of clothes on. Yeah, the guy's naked. <laughs> Theater 5 presents The Good Samaritan. Hey, you want to get killed? What are you doing in the middle of the road? Out! Get out! Uh, easy. E easy with that gun, huh? Get out of them clothes. Well, can't we talk this over? Get him out of them clothes. Okay, you fellas. We got the guy's clothes, a little dough, and a car. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Step on it. It's dark. Dark. What? Why is it so dark? Help! Help me! Let me up. I, I, I can't move. It feels different now. What? What happened? I'm alone. So. So alone. Where's the man? In the room. Oh, you almost ran him over. People. You know, driver, you, you stopped just in time. Yeah. My land. Not a stitch on. I can't look. Uh, is he dead? The back of his head. People. Is that blood? He ain't moved. I'm not alone. Miss! Miss, you young lady back in the car. What's the matter? There's been an accident. Oh, I didn't feel any crash. You don't want me, miss. What hit him? All around me. People. Oh, this is uh, very embarrassing. Don't look, miss. He's really had it. Look at his head. Jane. Jane, that you? This man is nude. I, I insist the ladies go back to the car. Jane. <laughs> Come close. I can still Help me. feel his pulse. Well, he, he should be covered. Uh, have you got a robe in the car, driver? Jane, I can't remember anything. You said pulse. you knew me too well. It's too rapid. Yeah, I started a course once, a hospital work. Oh, gee, he's cold. Jane, you said you'd help me. Get me off the road. Will you go bring something to cover this man? You people have got the luggage. I don't carry no robe. The blood. A lot's run into the dirt under his face, but it's not blocking air. His air, I, I mean the dirt. You're not Jane. Why did Jane leave me? Oh, oh, there's a bad swelling back in the head. The way he's lying on his face. Look at the left leg. It sticks out crazy-like. He's got to get to a hospital. Oh, well, no, I... I... can't I remember you, Jane. I remember what you said. He should be covered to keep heat in, because he's in shock. Oh, that's exactly what I've been saying. The, the man must be covered. Yeah, well, I got me a top. Oh, I've seen them naked before. Jane, you know, Mary said it too. Selfish. Mary always reminded me of Hannah. Hannah? <laughs> She's way back. Didn't I meet Hannah when I was dropping in on Carolyn? Don't be jealous. Tell me, Jane. Oh, here's the top. Here, here. Is it uh, all right to look? No. Uh, yeah, he's coming. Uh, didn't I always help people, all the girls? If you never promise, how can they say you're selfish? Well, most likely some tramp, some hobo. Oh, I'd question that. He has a haircut. And manicure. Jane, didn't I? Fun and games? <laughs> I'll always leave him laughing. Is there uh, enough uh, room to drive around him? You see how he's lying. Mm. 
Oh, you, you could phone for medical help. Once we reach the hotel. The hospital's the other way. Hospital? Well, why couldn't you move him? You're not supposed to move him. You're supposed to call an ambulance. The other way, I said. Hospital's back 20 miles to the other side of town. Oh, I've often worried all these years coming up here to the Cape for my health. Why won't you help me? Tell me who I am. Back to the railroad station, you say, and 20 miles beyond that? Well, of course, now I could go, I guess, and wake somebody back in town with a telephone. And leave us out here in this wilderness? Well, what happens is you leave him, ma'am. Somebody else drives through and don't slow down for the turn. I, uh, suppose it would be too much to hope that... Uh, huh? Well, uh, for someone else, I mean, to come through... Uh, however, someone could very well run over him, as you point out. That is a bad time. Help me. Of course, now, if this wasn't a holiday night, it might be a mail truck barreling through before 1 a.m. Oh? 1 a.m. It was dark when that... I remember. Uh Uh-oh. I remember the guy jumped out with a gun. Look. Look. Gun. Gun. The gun. (laughs) Oh, Mister, Mister, hurt me. Head. Why it's all going round and round. Can you hear me? The head. I. Mister, you you, you know it's it's like he wanted to say something. I can't blame you, girl. You you can't afford it. (laughs) Mister, (laughs) he didn't run. (laughs) Well, I I saw no sign of any movement. Uh, Miss, he's. Not going to make it. No. Then we'd have to be the ones to take him. Yeah. Well, uh, she's had the hospital training. Uh, well, I, hospital? I, I started to, I said. I quit. Yes. No, I, I, I didn't want to get involved. Well, you also said that the man mustn't be moved. Well, there isn't any choice. Yes, you have a voice just like that girl. Now, just one minute, young lady. I have had some legal training. Has it occurred to you that we could be liable? Court. Huh? I'm in court. They got the guy with a gun. Well, for example, perhaps on some negligence basis. By moving him, I mean. Moving might uh, conceivably do this man a serious medical damage. Well, I remember reading that in my Digest magazine. Mm, no, no. Where am I? Now, on the other hand, if uh, this man should die for some uh, reason of neglect and we are shown to be, uh, well, to have been the last on the accident scene, the last human being near us, <laughs> that is... Why, it's entirely possible that we could be held in some way accountable for his death. Oh, that's all. Yeah, to by any family of his or next kin. Oh, no. uh, <clears throat> I remind you, we we don't know who this man is. Jane. Tell me, we please. Pull the rear you know seat me. out here. I'll Jane. get it. Oh, no, Do what you said. Uh, uh, help uh, me. Uh, uh, I know. In there. Is there a chance? Now, when you move him, you all... Work together li- like a team on each side, huh? Uh, now look at me. Keep the body Jane, in a straight line. Show me. And I'll come off the. I'll, I'll come off the road. Just, just give me another chance. Push the car seat under. I promise, Jane. I promise. No more fast talk. I'll, I'll, I'll marry you, Jane. This time, I, I promise, Jane. I'll, I'll settle down. Get me off the road. Get me off the road. Shouldn't we be nearing the railroad station? No, he's still got a way to... He, hey, well, what? Uh, 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 red flares uh, around that turn. Out! Uh, out of that uh, car! Uh, One at a time. Keep your hands up. Out in front of your headlights. Move. <laughs> State Trooper Corporal Johnson. This road's officially closed. Oh, uh, sure glad to see you, Corporal. And I guess I can speak for all these people, too. Uh, Some are guests for Piney Point Hotel. What uh, happened to this man on the back seat here? Why, uh, this man was lying face down, Corporal, alone and badly beaten in the road. Yes, and completely naked, too. 
We uh, turned right around to get him to the nearest hospital. You said beaten? I, I should have said uh, injured. Know his name? Oh, no, complete stranger, officer. How far north of here did you find him? Oh, about uh, eight miles. Almost run him over. Spread out he was, like a flounder, face down across the road. Remember exactly where in the road? Right where she makes that left, and then the sharp right around the scrub oak. His hands are so cold. Jane. Was he conscious? Make any statement? No, not a word, Corporal. Like he is now. Uh, so, uh, could we possibly, with your assistance, Corporal, uh, transfer him to your vehicle? Well, let's see. It's now uh, 10.20... Uh, what time would you say... Oh, I remember my times all these years meeting the train. Uh, come upon him, I say, uh, quarter past nine. Eight miles up? Said you turned right around? Came back slow. Real slow, Corporal, to ease the pain. I see. What did you do the other 45 minutes? Why, we, uh... Jane, oh, tell the Oh, why don't truth, you Jane. come out with it? You didn't want to get involved. I'll marry you. I'll marry you, Jane. Excuse me. Be back in a minute. Hmm. Snippy, isn't he? Jane. Getting sleepy. I'm sorry. Don't leave me. I can't give you any so words. Jane. So responsible. Yeah, we I'll did turn worry. around, didn't we? We have put ourselves out. Just let me know. Yes, sir, Captain. On that aided serious case. Well, I don't know, sir, yet, if or what it has to do with the break. Ten for. Oh, then, uh, once again, if you please, have you any idea what happened to this man? To his clothes? Did you see any sign of his car? Uh, he was this way, out cold from the start. Now, my orders are to let no one through, north or south. Barracks is radioing an ambulance. Will you all stand away from the car? Into the bushes, please. Over there. Why? Uh, Why, my shoes will be ruined. Oh, no, I'd like to know the meaning of all this. Uh, what about my car? Just uh, cut uh, the lights. Uh, uh, Leave it. Miss, with the others, please. All right, I just wanted to steady his head. I've been sleeping. Don't. Don't go away. He's not being moved now till the ambulance. In. In, out of sight, more. Just one minute. That'd be the state police helicopter. He's turned on the red police light on top of his car, blinking it on and off. Yeah, well, that trooper, I'll have this out with him. I mean, respectable citizens like us. I, I figure he just wants to give them a fix on this road in the dark. Corporal, I insist on knowing the meaning of all this. Sorry for any inconvenience. I insist. There's been a jailbreak up at Pine Penitentiary. That's five and three-quarter miles north by northeast. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I've taken visitors up there many a Sunday. Now, if you'll all stay together here in the bush, I have to scout on up the road. Oh. Oh, no. You're going to leave us? I'm just one man, lady. Now, in case this victim in the car comes to, just assure him there'll be an ambulance. You ask him his name. Uh, quietly, understand? Ask him what happened. Any information will be helpful. All right. Uh, I remind you, sir, that's your job. Sir, if I'll you... I'll see your superiors are notified. Sir, I said there's been a jailbreak. My orders are to control this portion of road, and I'm just following orders. Four inmates from Ward C. Killed a guard and got his gun. They weren't missed till after supper. That gives them a four-hour start. So you see, we gotta move as quickly as we can. So now, if you'll just please cooperate. Stay put until I get back. I'm afraid. Oh. It's, it's so dark. Yeah, it is, kind of. So, uh, uh, we'll uh, just stay together and... Uh, What's uh, Ward C? Ward C? It's the worst. 
the worst. Criminally insane. <gasps> Jane. <laughs> I'm awake now. Madam. Madam. Please, please now, madam. Will, will you control yourself? I can't help it. My heart. It's not you went away Don't from me, Jane. Just don't I'm excite just, yourself. Been you, strong. You're getting yourself all worked I out. So I tried. I tried. I almost fell for it, Jane. I, but I get it. Help I got your baby now. I can't. Something out there is watching me. <laughs> I can't stand this. In all my life, I've never had such a day. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, neither have I. I mean, it's hardly proper people like us being forced to stand here in the... Yeah, well, uh, we'd better keep our voices down. You're not alone. Respectable <laughs> citizens. On our way to a perfectly obvious destination. Right there. A piney point hotel. I had a rotten day in the city. A long nine-hour train ride. And, and now on top of everything, this ridiculous delay. <laughs> I tell you, you, you put yourself out there, <laughs> there now, to try to do the right thing, to stop and help a fellow human being in distress. Oh, he's a talker, a fast talker, huh, Jane? Oh, dear. It just goes to show you, when you go out of your way, the thanks you get. Good, good. Fast talker like me, right, Jane? We could have been up to the hotel. You realize we've already paid for a meal we won't get. Oh, what a lie. Isn't that just too bad? Well, no. Jane, I almost fell for you, Jane. You said I was selfish. You're selfish too, Jane. You're all selfish. Think of yourselves. Oh, I... I... I want to go, go to sleep. Well, uh, I'm back. Uh, Are you all right? I, I guess yes. so. Go ahead. Well, I, I got news. A little panic. There were a few shots, uh -huh. but we got him. We collared all four convicts. Well, now, I want to tell you, you he, he's to be congratulated. That's excellent. <laughs> yeah. Excellent, Corporal. Now, you, you men all did an excellent job. Seems the car they stole skidded, broke an axle halfway to the hotel. Of course, they abandoned it, went from there on foot. And that's why the shootout broke loose up at the hotel. Excuse me, I want to take a look at our injured friends in the car. You know... If we hadn't stopped, we'd have run right into them on the road. Like he did. Actually, he saved your lives. Well, I uh, I knew we did the right thing uh, to uh, stop and help him. Uh, of course. Uh, I mean, legally it was risky, I suppose, but it is our duty as citizens to take that risk to uh, help a fellow human being. Officer? Yes, miss? He's dead. Presented The Good Samaritans, written by Peter Irving and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Ian Martin, Robert Dryden, Gilbert Mack, Vicki Bola, Cliff Carpenter, and Alice Yerman. Audio engineer, Neil Pulse. Sound technician, M.C. Brock. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlastovsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. 
Right to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.